Target 32 investigates more allegations against Kentucky's child protection system, among them the suggestion that children are being removed from homes and hastily put up for adoption to make extra money for the state through federal adoption reimbursements. In the entire justice system, there may be nothing more gut-wrenching, more life-affecting for everyone involved than taking somebody's children away for good. Earlier, in part one, we showed you how a woman lost her children in a 17-minute hearing with no proof of parental wrongdoing and only one witness, the caseworker. Now, a look at several other disturbing allegations, from fast-tracked adoptions just to make bonus money to special orders for white children. Anyone that had an opinion that was contrary to their goal of adoption, that information was suppressed. The complaints keep pouring in, alleging egregious conduct by Child Protective Services. This woman's children were taken away and sent to a foster family that moved to Peoria, Illinois. I had court-ordered weekly visitation, and so my children were being transported six and a half hours one way every week for my visitation. This woman has learned the state licensed counselor who testified against her in her child custody case has been charged with nine counts of practicing psychology without a license. I'm in a terrible quandary. I can't go to Child Protective Services. They don't protect. They don't protect the children. She says there her CPS no caseworker there pretended no to be her advocate, then turned on her when it counted. Her whole report is false, and it, as you read it, and as you read my complaint against her, it, you can tell that she fashioned her answers after the fact to cover herself. Same kind of complaint from this man. When CPS comes in there, they basically do have a say-so over where those kids are going to go. He echoes concerns we heard from dozens of men who claim caseworkers don't take fathers seriously, don't show up for key hearings, and don't return calls. I looked forward to, on both cases, uh, them being able to come in there and stand up for me to help me protect my kids, and both times they've let me down. One year ago, after our investigation of alleged CPS abuses like this one, where a Hardin County couple's newborn was taken right out of the hospital before the parents even had a chance to do anything wrong, we asked the woman in charge of the caseworkers what criteria is necessary to take children away from parents. We have to be able to prove and swear before the judge that the child is at imminent risk of death, serious injury, sexual abuse, something that is just egregious. But according to the Foster Care Review Board's 2004 annual report, child abuse accounts for only 11% of the reasons why children are removed from biological homes. The overwhelming majority, 77%, come from cases of neglect or dependency, which often stem from economic or substance abuse problems. But we were troubled. Uh, by what we saw. The nonprofit watchdog group Kentucky Youth Advocates noticed a radical spike in CPS complaints after our investigation aired last year, so KYA launched an investigation of its own, interviewing hundreds of parents and workers. It concluded too many neglected children and their families are treated in deplorable ways by caseworkers whose attitudes are often hateful, rude, or outright hostile. It found biological parents are not given a fair shake and adoptions are expedited much too quickly. In fact, KYA calls it a stacked deck against parents with rapid investigations leading to premature removal of children through unrealistic case plans and goals that may seem impossible for many families to meet. Which begs the question, why is this happening? With recent changes at the federal level, uh, state government gets uh, uh, reimbursements based upon the rate of adoptions. In the most disturbing suggestion in this report, the explanation may be that adoptions are fast-tracked to bring Kentucky more federal money from federal adoption reimbursements. In 2004, finalized adoptions in Kentucky ballooned to 724, while the federal bonus money more than doubled from 452000 the year before to more than a million dollars. Do we have um, specific evidence that that is what is happening? No. Did we receive enough um, information and data and stories? Uh, when we looked at trend lines, was there enough of a difference to cause us concerns? Yes. And that's not all. KYA heard troubling eyewitness accounts of how many adoptions are handled. We certainly have lots of calls from CPS employees who are uh, alleging that adoptions are 
race-based, that Caucasian kids get preferential treatment over minority children. Uh, we got lots of calls that suggested that in some parts of the state, adoptions were uh, tinged with political favoritism. Uh, we got lots of quotes about, I heard so-and-so saying, well, this person deserves that white infant. Uh, After postponing an interview with us about this last week, the man in charge of CPS sat down with us. He denies allegations of quick trigger removal and retaliation against parents who appeal and a political race-based adoption process. And this is how he responds to the suggestion that all this is happening to make more money through federal adoption reimbursements. Last year, we spent nearly $39 million in adoption subsidies. We received a $1 million incentive. Those that say our adoption numbers are uh, impacted by the federal incentive simply don't understand the methodology. It doesn't make sense that we would spend $39 million to receive $1 million in bonus or incentive money. The commissioner also, during that interview, announced an independent task force is being put together made up of people like Terry Brooks to look into these issues. The state inspector general is also now investigating these allegations. I'm John Bull, WLKY News Channel 32.